Ladies and gentlemen, Seahawks and football fans everywhere, a very warm welcome back to the We Talk Seahawks podcast. I hope you're all doing well. Um, the Seattle Seahawks will never, ever, ever play in a normal football game, will they? They just, we just, we're immune to it. We just can't play in a normal football game. Um, but hey, oh, it doesn't matter because we still won 23 to 27 over the Rams. A massive win for the Seahawks for the context of this season moving forward and what we might achieve this year. Um, seven and five is a hell of a lot better than six and six in terms of the playoff race. So it was a big win with the uh, with a bit of a tough schedule coming up in the next couple of weeks, um, and we can't wait to get into it tonight. Loads of talking points as there always is coming out of a Seahawks game. Um, feels like it was an especially uh, there's, there's an abundance of talking points coming out of this Rams game more than in recent weeks um, because of just the absolute shit show that it was in many ways. But um, yeah, um, there's, <laughs> I wouldn't rather have two other blokes try and break this game down with me um, than, than these two. So positive, Pez. We'll start with you. How are you, mate? I'm good, mate. I'm good. good. I enjoyed it. That game was fun. I can imagine you enjoyed it. Of, yeah. For a season of no stress. It was fun. It was fun. I'm glad you had fun. Playoffs. If we make the playoffs, then you'll see the more serious side to me. But for now, let's just enjoy it. Let's enjoy the games of just stupidness. It's not like back in the day where we were expected to make the playoffs and these games were like stress balls. It's like, no. As everyone keeps saying, we're living with we're, we're, what we on house money. What's the saying? Yeah, we're just we're just using house money this season, and look what we're doing with house money. So it's not perfect, but fuck it, it's entertaining. <laughs> well, at least you're at least you're laughing. At least you're having fun anyway, Pez. That's the main thing. Um, Josh, were you having fun during that game, or were you like me and ripping your hair up? Um. <sighs> A bit of both, if I'm being completely honest. It was it was such a weird game to watch because as much as obviously we and most of the media as well have said that the Seahawks should have walked it because we were playing a massively depleted Rams side, we don't half like to make things look difficult, do we? And um, we like to make really obscure players look really good, like Brandon Powell. Sounds like a builder, know? doesn't he? Exactly. It literally sounds like they pulled, they pulled someone up off the street and went, play football before? Yeah, come on, run the ball for us. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it is what it is. I hate using that saying, but it was a weird game. I think the the run game was a big... <laughs> we're going to address it later, yes, but that was a, a big stumbling block for us. Gino, again, like uh, the man is just... As as you would say, man is doing some stuff now. He's he's he just seems to be getting better. His stats just don't lie. I know we've got some of them coming up from uh, from Pez later because Pez has stats. Um, but yeah, no, it, it was all right. I by the time I'd finished, I think I needed to give myself at least half an hour just to try and piece together what had happened and settle my brain before I went to bed. But yeah, let's get into it, boys. Oh, I, well, I couldn't sit on my brain because I had nothing left. I, I just, I, there was nothing left in me. I just couldn't get to sleep just trying to envision and picture together what had just happened and how we'd actually won that game. Um, but yeah, we're going to get into it. Gino Smith, obviously, finally shown that he can win in the fourth quarter and put the game on his back and win. I know, Josh, that was one of your still waiting to tick off the to-do list for Gino, so we'll talk about that. Um Running backs, who needs them? We're going to get into all that because... uh, We We do. (laughs) Yeah, we do. We also do. Anyone anyone free. Anyone free Sunday. It's a shame that LJ Collier can't stay healthy because I'm sure he would have got a a chance of winning the ball as well. Um, How about that DK versus Jalen Ramsey battle? We'll get into that because that was Uh, box office. I was enjoying that. That that was the most entertaining part of that game. That's all I waited. Get us back on offence. Those two just... They're just it, it. It's it's the Batman and Robin of the NFL world. Them two. It's it's just perfect. It's absolute box office every time. Um, the I, trenches. Do you not know I mean like Bat, 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 Batman, Batman and Joker? Joker? I'm not yeah. a Marvel fan. Who are the DC? How very dare you? The DC. There's a red button. Oh, is it DC? The bottom of your screen. 
Just turn it off. Me and, Pe- me and Pez will take it from here. Have a word with yourself and come back in. Grow up with a better attitude. Grow up watching all that They're like crap. Ca- Captain America Red Skull. Spider-Man Venom. It means nothing to me. Or Thanos. Yeah, Avengers Thanos. Take your pick. Any right. of those comic book analogies would have worked. You have and offended me to my core, up. sir. Anyone Oof. who watches this will see the Marvel stuff behind me. Hey, and I've you said could've... a lot. You could have told me Bob the Builder was Spy- Spider Man's arch nemesis. I don't believe it. I, I, I don't. I don't care. I, I don't care for it. But there you go. You've already. Well, we saw Seahawks listen. This will be my last pod. Yes. Well, <laughs> well, let's make it a good one then, Josh. Um, the Battle of the Trenches. Um, it was the big talking point coming out in the last game. It's also going to be a talking point coming out of this game because uh, there was good and bad things um, at different parts of both the offense and defensive line. So we'll get onto them. Um, I want to hear our thoughts on Bobby Wagner and his performance in the uh, in the long-awaited revenge game after him joining the Rams. Did we uh, were we impressed? What did we think of him? Uh, I'll be interested to see some of the opinions around the room on that. We've got to talk about my boy Tariq Woolen uh, because the kid is just. Really? Oh, I do just get, get I the tissues out for one. I, th- I thought we'd leave him for one episode to skirt over him. Oh, he hasn't right. done anything special. Uh, to be fair, yeah, we probably if we're if we're pressed for time, Pez, we can cut him out of this podcast, can't we? Gotta uh, get we positive Pez in. I was what I was just gonna say we can't cut positive Pez out of the uh, out of the podcast, so we've got to make room somewhere. Um for, for those of you that are listening as well, we've also got our prize draw at the end. Yes, we do. We do have our That's... prize draw for the giveaway. Anyone, anyone who entered, don't just turn off the pod and go, not even gonna announce it. And before actually before I get into the start of this podcast. Uh, thank you for reminding me, Josh. I would like to just take a little minute to say a big thank you to all of our listeners because this last week, um, Spotify granted me the or, or us. I think I'm the only one who has, has access to oh, the anchor. Um, oh, taking all the glory. Yeah. So yeah, it is only you know this is Josh's last podcast anyway. Um, we got our yeah, that's true, Pete. Um, we got our. We got our Spotify wrapped for podcasters because Anchor is owned by Spotify, so they were uh, they were able to put together a Spotify wrap for us. And um, I don't know about you, lads, but it it, it blew me away, really. Um, not what I was expecting at all. Um, our podcast. I don't know whether this was in a sports topic or just in general. To be honest, I don't care. They're equally as amazing. Um, our podcast was in the top 10% more shared globally, and we were in the top 25% most followed podcasts. Um, for a podcast that came out of a lockdown board ridden bedroom in August of 2020 to where we are now to be able to read off those stats and attribute those stats to our podcast um, is pretty surreal really uh, for what we do and how much time we have available to put into this podcast Um, you know we're not professionals by any means we're not paid to do this This isn't our living is it Um, so to be able to to get those kind of numbers on this podcast and it, it it's just absolutely unbelievable really um so to every single one of you who tunes into this podcast on a weekly basis um or however regularly you tune into this podcast if you've ever liked interacted with our social media give it a listen for five ten minutes whether you listen for the entire episodes every week whatever you do however you interact with the we talk to Ops podcast um We'd just like to say a massive thank you to all of you because that is that those numbers have blown us away and uh, and we couldn't do it without you. So um, yes, thank you all very much for that. Um, I don't know if you lads want to say anything before we get into the uh, into the main podcast. Um, just go walk, and we might as well stop now. James just took all the airtime. Well, cheers, mate. <laughs> oh, sorry, we we, all, we only booked in for ten minutes. <laughs> My God, I, I'm, I'll, I'll just say thank you very much. It's a hell of an experience doing this with you boys. Um, for anyone who actually wants to know all the stats, they're all over our Instagram. Uh, I think they've been shared on our Twitter as well, so you can have a look at exactly what we're talking about. Uh, mm-hmm. We talk Seahawks on Twitter and at We Talk Seahawks on Insta. Give us a follow. Give us a look. Feel free to message us. No dick pics that. though. Now let's no talk picks. some Geno Smith. All right, let's do it. Let's get into it. Come on. Come on then. Right. 28 for Stop 39. Your own halos. Let's get going. <laughs> I'm trying, Pez. If you'll let me get there, I'm trying. Um, Gino Smith, 28 for 39 on the completion attempts, 367 yards passing and three touchdowns to one interception. Um, however, 
I think even though I think that's probably about his highest yardage thrown this year, um, or maybe even in his career per game, I think the the storyline coming out of this, at least in terms of what our podcast is has been asking and clamoring for Geno Smith to do in recent weeks, is to put a game on his back in the fourth quarter. Can he lead a game winning drive? Well, the answer is yes. Um it certainly he certainly proved that he's got it in his arsenal now. Um, so I will come to you first, Josh, because this is the thing that you were talking about. Um, how impressed were you? Now, how, well, how impressed are you now that Gino you've, has, has shown that he's got that in his locker to be able to do that now? And is is that going to affect how much we pay him potentially in the off season? Yes. Um, in short, I think if he carries on managing games and playing like he is, that's that's going to command a, a heftier salary than I think we were initially thinking. Um, as as and anyone who's listened to the pod knows that I've I've been banging this drum for the past couple of weeks. He's managed to finish a game-winning drive. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves. He's managed to finish a singular one game-winning drive. And I will always say it until the day I die, consistency. If I can see him doing more, I will happily just be, just be like, hand the reins to Gino. Like Statistically, he's in the top five for every single quarterback category at the moment. Pez will go into that in a bit, I think. Um, I don't stats. know why I said I think. Stats, Pez will go into it. Um, Can I just play a little devil, devil's advocate there, Josh? Because if he isn't doing that, though, isn't that then also showing that he's playing well enough to not need to put a game on it? Yeah, fair just, enough. Just playing but, devil's advocate. No, I understand that. However, let's face it, with the way our defence has been, it's going to be a shootout pretty much every single game. Fair enough. Also, so he is a model of consistency. Because he loves playing stature in the pocket and getting hit <laughs> over and over again. So he does show consistency. It might not be positive. All right, the po- po- positive consistency is what I want. I mean, I, I'm, 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 everyone who, who listened to us in the off season, I was saying it should be Drew Locke. He's got a higher upside. But Gino has generally come in and just changed the game for us. He's managing and playing the game the way Waldron wants it to be played. And I think the way Pete wants it to be played, as Pete has said, he just wants a point guard there. Throwing, throwing balls around and just putting people in space. Brilliant. Um, I just want I want this to con to continue. I think though, based on the rest of our our schedule, I think there might be a couple more shootouts where they shouldn't be as close as it is, and he may have to put us on his back. Um, I'm thinking the the 49ers one especially um, because that is going to be our better offense versus their better defense, and then their substandard. Offense, well, I say substandard. Depends on who they've got playing uh, QB. It might be Brock Purdy again, Mister Irrelevant. Um, against our at the moment substandard defense. So this might be Gino having to take this uh, these games by the horns and just lead us and lead us in the last two minutes with a two minute drill, power that ball down the field, and then just score us a game winning TD. Which I wouldn't be adverse to watching. It makes for interesting football. My hairline will go further and further back. I will literally, if you literally, like people that look on YouTube, the the hairline progression, it goes from James to me to Pez. <laughs> That's how it goes. That's the stages. It's like an so, evolution. So these cameras are like a timeline <laughs> of what your hair, is that what are you saying? G- right, generally, I went from having a hairline like you to having one that's slowly disappearing, <laughs> with me a bigger forehead, to soon I'll have a six head like, uh, like Pez. <laughs> yeah. Looks lovely, on, Pez, it's, on, it's on you, mate. <laughs> so, Gino, as uh, Josh alluded to, he's in the top five for pretty much every single stat. What's crazy? So, I'll run through him. They all, I feel like now, this far into the season and after getting his game winning drive, he deserves individual applause for each stat. We, this one's very interesting, but I think this one shows just how little the quarterbacks have run this year. He's in the top 10 for QB rushing yards on 2 4 3. He's only, don't get me wrong, there's a big gap. There's his first <laughs> set, Gino and Mahomes, and then the top seven are just 200 yards ahead, like you know, your standard runners. But he's still in there. 40 yards behind Mahomes for rushing. That is age and stuff. So it's still impressive. Still mm-hmm. shows it got wheels because when he gets motoring, people don't like to go anywhere near him. He's 
Second in passer rating with a 108.7. That's impressive. Really is impressive. He is yards per attempt. He is joint third with Mahomes again. We'll just chuck some names out there because Mahomes essentially is everyone's MVP favourite. Mm-hmm. So he's 40 yards rushing behind Mahomes. He's got a passer rating of 3.8 higher than Mahomes, if you keep him with me. He's joint on yards per attempt with Mahomes. His completion percentage is the best in the league by 2.6. And that Joel Burrow is the one next to him, another fan Mm favourite. Mahomes isn't even on the list of the top 10. Just chuck that out there. And then he is fifth for passing touchdowns, eight behind Mahomes. To give it some thingy. Then passing yards, Mahomes is top by 600 and odd. So you do start seeing the differences. Mm-hmm. But he's, st- he's still... Who thought that Gino fucking Smith would be? <laughs> well, it's, it's mental, isn't it, having this conversation at this Week point in the season? 14 <laughs> and Gino Smith is genuinely... He is genuinely not a banter thing, not a... Not some guy's going to go, oh, let's put Russell Wilson over and give him a vote. He's, gen- he's going to get genuine top five MPV vote. MP, MVP. MVP. Vote. MVGs. I've been playing Call of Duty, you know. Oh, there you are. <laughs> to be honest, Pez, I thought you'd nick my stat on Gino because this is one that... I'm is... not finished. Oh, he's not finished. Sorry. <laughs> I do apologize. I'm not finished. Get back in your box. This is my segment. <laughs> so, this one I found interesting from Next Gen Stats. Geno Smith once again dominated single high safety coverages in week 13, completing 19 of 25 passes for 250 yards and three touchdowns. Smith has thrown a league high of 15 touchdowns and earned a perfect 99 NGS passing score against single high coverage this season. Next gen stats, isn't it? And yes. And then just to read his final drive. The, the one what Josh wanted, the one what I was with Josh, we were like, we want to see it. It just, you got to read it off. So he was six for nine, 65 yards, nine yards to DK, seven yards to Noah, 14 yards to Noah, 10 yards to Tyler, 17 yards to Marquise, and then the touchdown to DK. That's just dominant. And it's so bizarre. <laughs> it's, just, it's just so bizarre it's week 14 and I remember at the start of the year me and Josh Jesus Christ it's a good job people aren't coming at us with pitchforks <laughs> because I'd be selling my house right now because I was he's got a backups mentality he's, he's this he's that he's got nothing and do you know what it's funny because now week 14 weeks on from saying that he, now he's conquered that game winning drive I genuinely think he's the kind of person who that's him now, he's just unlocked another door, because what did we say at the start of the year this man just keeps on getting better and better and better and now this is like the final door like could we potentially be seeing like for him mentally this is like the final box for himself and flip to switch are we got yeah? Are we literally the run into the playoffs? What do they always say? Like, what do they always say about the Patriots with your Bill Belichick's and your Brady's? They always started off crap, and everyone's like, "This is the year they're falling off." Ha ha ha! Everyone's ready to burn burn them down halfway through the season. Flip switch, and they go. Like they 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 do. We're going to talk about DK. With the Ramsey thing, but I want to bring DK in to the Gino thing. I honestly think Gino is elevating DK to. He, do you know what? Do you know what is bizarre? Say what you want about Russ, but before this season, everyone, whether you hated him or not, everyone had the same opinion of the guy, and that's look what DK could do with Russ. Is DK going to struggle now? Russ isn't there. Do you know? Do you know what's 
happened to DK? Gino's unlocked DK. Gino Smith, I'll say it again to people because I can't believe I'm saying it myself. He is unlocking G, he is locking DK to a totally new level. His comfort blanket is Tyler. Because what we're seeing now is Russ didn't make Tyler look good. Tyler made Russ look good. Mm -hmm. Tyler Lockett is Doug Baldwin 2.0. He was Russ's safety blanket. He is now Gino's safety blanket. What was it um, on this drive, the 10 yards? Gino didn't even do a read. I, I watched him again. He didn't even check through his progressions. He literally just found where Tyler was and lasered the ball to him. Because he's like, I need 10 yards because it's third and 10. He's going to get me them 10 yards. I'm not going to risk DK because that's a bit stupid because Jalen Ramsey, you don't know what, you don't know where that's going to go. But Tyler, I know for a fact he will get me 10 yards. Comfort blanket. And what he's doing to that DK Metcalf is, is phenomenal. DK, eight for eight. What did we say for the last two years? Great footballer, doesn't high point the football, nearly broke his neck week one for Gino, catching that ball, what could have been picked off, mm. doing everything he can because he's elevated. Now he's a leader. Yeah. I think and I think as well, eight, it's... Just, oh, just finish off. Go on. Eight for eight. Who, like, I don't... I think I saw a stat. I don't know if it's true, but apparently that's DK's first perfect... Do you know, mm. catching game. Doesn't surprise me. And I, how many times? Name me a time in a game this season where DK has dropped a ball. So who throws a better ball, Russ or Gino? Because you literally could get mesmerised with the spiral of Gino's throw. He's perfect. He doesn't move, and he just goes. That no, doesn't move. Before you know it, it's whacking your eye. You've got a fat black eye. One of them ones, isn't it? I think it's from what just just going on from what you said before we move on. I think it's indicative in how well DK is doing this season in the fact that he's not just a deep threat like he was with Russ. Russ just used him over the top, and it was like right. You you, you look at DK stats and they look amazing, but the majority of them are just long balls. So it's like, it's just Russ going, well, she's out there, or he's out there already, and just lobs it. Whereas now we're unlocking him for 5, 10, 15 yards at a time, which means he's not got to try and track a ball over 60 yards over his shoulder. He's he's making these nice, easy throws, but he's getting the like the, the yards have to catch as well. I mean, just you talk about DK and Tyler, all right, just very quickly. This season, receptions, DK 67, Tyler 68. This season, yards receiving. DK, 798. Tyler, 836. So we're looking at average yards per reception. DK, 11.9. Tyler, 12.7. DK's got six touchdowns. Uh, sorry, five touchdowns. Tyler's got seven. Hmm. We are going to have two, if it carries on like this, two 1,000-yard receivers. And they're both... I, I, I see Tyler Lockett still in his prime because he's playing, and we, we mentioned it the other week, that he goes down really easily. But he's playing to to maintain. He's mm. not going to take massive hits every time because he doesn't have to. He can take those 10 yards, get to the ground. Brilliant. He's started opening himself up a little bit more to try and get more yak. But, you know, I'm 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 fully on board with you, Pez. Statistically, Just... Gino has been amazing and he's unlocking the potential of a lot of our players getting Noah Fant into the game as well this this week it's happening more and more it's a slow build where he's, he's actually seeing more and more of the ball which I'm really excited to see just whilst we're on these two because I do think it wasn't in our like show notes to speak about them too but I feel like it does warrant just a little conversation on them two and what they're doing at the moment because like stat like I've got a few stats of them they're ranked 11th and 12th so, buddy, buddy, um, with 67 and 66 receptions. Metcalf's on pace for 95 receptions. Lockett's on pace for 94. Um, Metcalf's uh, career high is 93. Lockett's is 100. But, um, 
Sorry, I misread that and I bumped myself up. Anyway, they're on for a shitload of um, receptions. <laughs> it's the technical term, the scientific term. <laughs> the, te the technical term <laughs> is that. And it was DK's first in his career, perfect catching game. And it's his the first, it's his fourth um, single game receiving yards since 2020. So it took him. So sing, single game receiving yards mm -hmm. since 2020, where he had 177 against Philly, 161 against San Fran, and 149 against Detroit. 127 is the highest since 2020. And I was going to ask you a question, Josh, of what you were saying. Um, how um, when you said about how Russ just used him as deep threat, do you, do you reckon that? Do you reckon they schemed him up like that and now he's took a more leadership role? He's turned around because he's always stated he can run more routes than people think he can. And now it's a case of, because essentially they thought it's a bit a bit naive of what they've done, but they've helped unlock him, is Russ didn't really need DK to do all that short yardage stuff because he has, as everyone says, he's got an elite deep ball. But Gino's going to need that help, so we're going to need you to run more of the route tree. Do you know, ignorantly at the start of the year, because remember at the start of the year, it was quite short and intermediate. It's only till recently he started chucking the deep ball. And do you reckon that is... 100%. 100, 1,000, 1 million percent, whatever people like to, you know, overestimate it to. It's simply when he first came into the league, I think it was a matter of you've got elite straight line speed, you are an absolute unit, and one-on-one -on -one, you're probably going to win these contested catches. When Russ throws that ball up, you know, there's a, a high likelihood that you're going to get the ball. Brilliant. And when he came out of the combine, everyone said about his three-cone drill, his change of direction, all that type of thing. And I think that is... That's sort of shown what can happen with when you come first, first come out of a combine and you go, you get thrust into the limelight. It's literally right. These are your key weapons. Let's use them. But then he's what? He's year three now, mm. isn't he? Yeah. So year three, they've gone, look, we know you've got straight line speed, but as it happened last year, he started bringing a couple more different routes in. And now this year, he's starting, like you said, because he's taking a bit more of a leadership role as well. He's taking these shorter routes. He's now less about, his personal accolades more about the team and helping his QB because he's got a QB he knows can't blow the top off someone all the time. So he's going to have to come back. And I think it's working perfectly. It's, it's such nice football to see as opposed to just, oh, the ball's being chucked for 70 yards. Are we going to get No, we didn't get it. Uh, third down. You know, it's like, oh, the ball's been thrown for 15 yards and now it's a first down and now we go again. I think it's much, much better to watch for any any football fan, whether you're a Seahawks fan or not, it's better football to watch. You've got splashy plays, which are always nice, but I like consistency. Use the word we, again. We know you do. Um, d d uh, just to add on that, it also, um, it makes, I feel like it's made DK more competitive. Mm -hmm. Get making him do all this extra work because he he's staying like he's staying in attack mode constantly. As we're going to get into in this game, it's he stood out and highlighted for me anyway. The reason why I brought this whole up, like conversation up is this game highlighted how much he's evolved as a player, and I kind of fought it with the whole unlocking Gino because. If he mentally has that switch from that drive, that, that final drive win to win the game, I'll call it now, James. The oh, fingers come out. Is. Gino, Tyler, and DK, if they all stay healthy, will be unstoppable. Them three together will be unstoppable. As we're going to go on to, who needs running backs? Them three, I think will be legit unstoppable. I don't think anyone will be able to slow them three down because DK, we've seen it through the years, but he's just on a different level of confidence. Like, Jimbo, pick your segue now, mate. You can either go DK versus Ramsey or running backs. Um, Pez has um, just, he's literally just lobbed that ball up for you. Two balls, in fact. Get swinging. Well, some. I'm going to catch yeah. it. I'm going to drag <laughs> me two feet and, get, and keep it on Jalen Ramsey and DK because... Um, because my goodness me, um, 
you're talking about DK having confidence now, Imagine. having the bollocks to to to, to see Jalen <laughs> Ramsey throwing his arms up, complaining that he's run away and going, taking a little double take. Yeah, follow going, me. Yeah. Well, do you know what then, son? Come over then. Come and follow me then. Having the bollocks to do that. And then obviously the next play, you know, he makes the catch and then Jalen Ramsey goes and follows him. And then it was so poignant to win the game with a DK Metcalf catch from Gino. And who's in coverage? <laughs> with a, with a Jalen Ramsey. Ramsey backpack. Yeah, just <laughs> on his shoulder. And the other two DBs who couldn't match up with him anyway. All three of them round him. Ramsey, they couldn't stop the man. Um, yeah, I, I'm not like you say, Pez. I'm loving this evolution of DK. We talked about it all the time on this podcast about how we want to see him mature and evolve into this leader now. Um and it, it, he's absolutely doing it this year. There's been times this year, again, where he's had slower games. Like you've said, Pez, that's his first sort of 127-yard game. I think he only had another, like in this season um, so far, he's only had one other 100-yard receiving game. Um, so he's struggled to get involved in games at times. But you'd never know it. There's no hissy fits. There's no sideline antics this year like there was with Russ in previous years. Um, the, the, there's none of that, and he just gets on with it. He's so happy whenever we score. You can see him run over, and you know the first one to celebrate with a Marquise Goodwin or a Lockett or whoever's catching the touchdowns. Even he's if there, lead blocking for K nine. He's there, lead blocking for K nine. He really God, is. Lead really blocking them in me. Downfield, get up. Deary me, that that would I would question some life decisions if if DK <laughs> Metcalf was blocking me. Deary me. Um, but yeah, he's just he is becoming the leader that he said that he was going to be, and uh, and and I'm absolutely loving it. Um, I don't know what I don't know what else you have to say on DK before we get to these running backs. The highlight of the whole game for me, but this is what I was getting at in that last point. Hence why Josh said you segued it perfectly. Is Jalen Ramsey when DK first came into the league, he owned him. Mm-hmm. It was statistics. You saw it on the field. He owned him. DK just couldn't get a beat on him. And look how the tides turn into the point where DK will run Jalen Ramsey out of the NFC uh, NFC West soon because DK has six touchdowns in his last five games against Jalen Ramsey, including the game-winning touchdown. He is turning the tide and starting to dominate Jalen Ramsey. And this game... This game, I honestly cannot wait till... I don't care what happens. Make the playoffs, don't make the playoffs. That last game, I am going to be watching it so excited. Because if... Like, yes, we want to make the playoffs. Even though I'm chilling out and loving the season, not getting too stressed, of course I'd love to make the playoffs. Could you imagine if both teams have nothing to lose anymore, what them two are going to do to each other? Nothing to lose. No implications. Let's just go all at it. Let's just fucking go. Like DK, could you make the playoffs? He in the back of his mind, he might be like, "I'm not going to go 100. I I want to be in them playoffs." Whereas both of them are like, "We're going on holiday after this. Let's just go out of a bang." Like they did a bang in the in this game. That that run across the line, and he's like, "Come on, come on." Yeah. DK never. That just shows the evolution of him and where he is mentally and in his game right now. The, the level he's at is he's golding Jalen Ramsey, the best corner in the league. I, this, I was the about best to say coverage this. corner in the league, and he's baiting him. How Other many than Tariq, we, by the way. How many seasons have we seen Jalen being the one baiting DK? Yeah. And DK dominated him. He did. Dominated him. In the routes, in the mental game, everything. He bodied him in the full game. He got that flag and he bodied him in the end zone. And my brother's going mental on the Discord, going, oh, yeah. And you still... I was like, that is hilarious, mate. That is <clears throat> some funny shit. Because then Jalen tried doing it back to him and then bounced off his chest. I was like, <laughs> oh, no. So I was about oh, to bring up no, that, that flag. So that flag for me was the I'm not a boy anymore flag. So like you said, Jalen, as the back and forth between Jalen and DK has always been there. But Jalen, I think, has always had slightly the edge, even though GK has got touchdowns, the DK has got touchdowns on him. I think that Jalen's always had that, that slightly a slightly better game against him every time. Um, but I think this was DK's statement of going, I ain't backing down from you now. I'm gonna make you my bitch. Yeah. 
and that little flag because it was it was a little flag it was a bit of chest bumping and i think dk may have stuck his helmet on his helmet a bit of thought, chest bumping. right i was there going go on dk go on have him and i thought right that's it dk is just laying down a challenge marker and from that moment on you had the wave over you had like loads of bits just niggly bits as well they were always chirping at each other and i loved seeing that because i know it was ramsey doing most of the chirping and i can imagine dk the way he's being because he's not that gobshite he was last season mm. it's mainly just him going smiling going yeah come on then and just letting it play through it, amazing dk is, well, is he's fast maturing into one of my favorite seahawks wide receivers ever he and also another thing i loved he pissed the Rams off that much. They're all they're all war crying on the bloody sideline. He's got Bobby all heat heat up. He's got Jalen yeah. screaming like a little yeah. child, and his toys have come out of the pram. DK's on the other side, like, yeah, pass me some skittles or something. <laughs> no, what, what is it? Have you got have you got that? Nest quick. I've got my favorite Gatorade. Nest quick, yeah. Have yeah. you got my favorite Gatorade in the tub? Like, just he's chilling out trying to find a Gatorade, and they're all like rah rah in on the other side because <laughs> of him. <laughs> Um, oh, yeah, man. Uh, it's like we said. It, it's it's always felt like Jalen Ramsey has won the mental battle and always been in DK's head ever since they've come into the league. Now it feels like DK is in Jalen's head whenever they match up. And it, like you said, I do feel like the tide is turning in that battle. Um, well, let's get to the running game because oh, running backs, me. running backs, who needs them? Um, Ken Walker goes down injured. I think. Based on reports, I think he should be okay for this coming game this weekend. Ja- jammed his ankle, was it, or something? Jammed his ankle. Sprained foot. It's like a type of ligament sprain. Yeah. Come yeah. out now and say it's a sprained foot, not an ankle. Ah, it's a sprained right, okay. foot. Okay, so... That's, it, it's that, weird. That, you could, so uh, another lower body injury on a turf field? Wow. Oh, my... Colour me surprised. I'm going to yes. beat this drum till the fucking skin falls off it. Those fields are awful. I put it on Twitter. I've told you guys. It's been all over our Discord. I personally think these are career killers. And when you get little injuries like that, they all start adding up. Hmm. Anyway, well, I, I'm, I'm just going to stop my rant. No, because, look, he goes down injured, and then every man and his dog got the opportunity to run the ball for the Seattle Seahawks, other than LJ Collier. Um and look, none of them did particularly well. This game showed me that it, it just showed to me how class Ken Walker is because and look, we all love DJ Dallas on here and and we all love everyone else. We, we love all of our Seahawks, of course we do. Um, but you could see the level of drop off in ability to run the ball between Ken Walker and then Dallas coming in and then Tony Jones Jr. coming in. Um, oh, awful. How bad, can I just address that? How bad was he? So I, I was listening to another pod today whilst I was driving for work and I didn't realise this, but he lost a contact mm-hmm. and didn't have a spare set. So he essentially, I'm pretty sure he took the other one out and just played blind. The guy ran into his, off. I mean, we said it last year about people running into their own, their own O-line, but he ran into our own his own O-line twice. You know, he can't catch a ball. You know, he he's just awful. There's a reason he was he was cut, and the fact like he because he couldn't catch a ball, he panicked so much about it that he nearly got his head taken off because he didn't have the the presence of mind or the spatial awareness to see who was coming after him. Now, the fair play, the guys went into the NFL is better than we'll ever be, but by caliber of NFL running backs, he is shit house. He is, but um, I, I I think fair play to him, though, for coming into the game on limited. It, it, there was absolutely no way he woke up that day thinking he was going to be involved in any way. Limited yeah. knowledge of the player, but coming in in a tough situation. Um, and then, like you say, playing the rest of the game legally blind, pretty much. Um, you know, he still made some first downs for us and, and kept drives moving at times. Took that, obviously, it took that monster hit just to get up and, and come back onto the field after taking that hit. Uh, look, I, he's nothing. He's nothing special. But do you know, what? I, I liked his attitude and fair play to him. I, I, it's he's not going to be. He, 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 you say, Josh, he's not. He's not any good. But I just like. I, I think credits where credits due. In that sense, I'll, you are entitled to your opinion. But this, opinions this, are like arseholes. Everyone's got one. Not everyone wants to see yours. So the stats. I was, I was listening to a podcast. Um, they do, by the way. Band. Everyone loves to see them. <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry, Pez. Man to man and Mike Dugard, they were talking about some of his stats and they were actually good running stats. To be quite honest, before in our Discord, I said, he's actually running, he's actually running all right, this guy. And then just fell off a cliff. He had some juice in him. He, he really did. But you're looking at, if I remember rightly, like seventh rounder undrafted by the Saints getting cut by them. Remember, I brought him up when they signed him and I read out his draft prospect. He he's just not that good. You got Derwin Thompson. He essentially he's coming in. Travis Homer should be back because he was out of an illness. God. Um, Wayne Goldman. So Travis Sam Homer. Wayne Goldman. No. He, no Goldman. Don't. Well, well he waved that off. Years. Don't oh. start. He's terrible. Well, he had his don't career start. day against us in 2020 don't, when the Giants beat us. Shit. Everyone has a career that. day against us. Do not wait until we get onto this defence because I'm sick of what I'm hearing from people at the moment. Like, it's a shock that we're shit in run defence. I think I've you've just, there. You've just... I think we're just, just shocking the shit. Well, for how many years, James? Because when did Goldman run over us for 100 odd yards? 2020. Oh, oh. Really? Is it? Yeah. Because I thought Clint Hurt... Oh, no, Clint Hurt wasn't the coordinator back then. So it's not his fault. I'm sick of people saying Clint Hurt's fucking shit, Clint Hurt's crap, Clint oh, Hurt's... I've definitely, oh, dear. I've definitely I mean, put the, the wasp list. I was going to say, this this has gone well off time. I, I, I think oh, the, don't, the don't get me thing. started. Just don't get me started. We were talking about running backs, not the defensive back, not the defensive He mentioned. Go, he mentioned... Mate. He mentioned Gorman ran over us like in 2020 no, when we no. thought that oh they didn't have Saquon so we're going to be safe and then Gorman pulled it out of the bag. I remember yeah. had a lovely was it touchdown down the sideline that like, he he ran off for, like 30 yeah. 40 yards or something yeah. ridiculous. But fair play, he's got some proven caliber. But that was against us in 2020 when we had Ken Norton as our defensive coordinator who basically trained everyone to be a sieve. Um, Is so, Ken still there? Ken Norton. No, it's not. Right. But, but our run defense is still that. shite. So I, we're waiting to run defense, and I'll, I'll, I'll not go as not no, nuclear. Just... <laughs> right, but anyway, Goldman's Jake, coming nowhere Jake. near the field because Travis Homer, Duran Thompson, and to be honest, fuck, fuck all this crap because it's essentially a Marshawn Lynch injury. What Ken's got is a Marshawn Lynch injury. Always with defeat, always because of how he runs and he cuts and he stamps his foot. Marshall was always picking these injuries up. More than likely, he might sit out this next game, but more than likely, they're just going to duct tape his feet up like fuck, and then he's going to be out there. Mm. In my opinion, unless they want to be super conservative and Travis Holmes is ready to go. Because if Travis Holmes isn't ready to go, it might just be a case of, Ken, you're going to have to suit up. Because we don't yeah. like we love DJ, but from listening to the Man's Man podcast, DJ went back in the game, injured, and then was limping around the locker room when he finished, like mm. in se- like severe pain. Mm. But just wouldn't let anyone help him. Was limping everywhere. Went back in, did what he had to do for the team, and that's why I personally love that kid. Yeah, oh, he's a tough he kid. Was- He's just, he's just, he's just a team guy. He's not going to be all world great. He can make some splash plays here and there, but he will do what's needed of him. And you need them guys to make a team successful. And before we get to the battle of the trenches, um, I think this lack of running game after Ken Walker, it's just another tick for Gino in in Gino's box um, for Gino to be able to go and win the game without a running game and effectively have to throw the ball for the rest of the game. Um, Another so second. I said to you, sorry, I said to you before we started, James, my little thing on how is the run game affecting the defense. So whilst we're on the run game, and I had my little rant about the defense, I, I've took I, I, I've took what Mike Dugard said on his um, man-to-man mailbag, basically talking about the defense and what's going wrong with it, and he said the thing is. To, he said something along the lines of, "If you have zero run game, then 
the defence is going to struggle. Because by having a run game, you're keeping the defence off the field more because you can mix your plays up. You're not just pass, 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 defence on the field. Pass, 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 pass. You can slow the game down. You can use the run game, you know, to mm-hmm. churn the yardage. And he just kind of left it there. But it got me thinking after listening to that, that is there a coincidence? And this is more a question to you two, what you think. Um, is there a coincidence on our defence looking so shocking these last couple of games? And it's just convenient that they're the games that can struggle to get going. Our defence has been getting gashed these last couple of games and it's just coincidental. The first thing that popped into my head when I heard it was, and it's funny he says that because Ken struggled to get going these last couple of games and our defence has been getting waxed all over the place. Is there Mm. a coincidental link of Ken being poor actually hindering the defence? from being successful at their game. Not completely, you know, like you get into the intricacies of the defence. Mm. He can't make people tackle. But, you know, it's just interesting that he said that. It got me thinking that... What do you mean is in because Ken isn't running the ball well, we, we're out or the defence is out there longer because we're not burning yeah. up time. So they're getting in more tired. No, I don't think so because the defence is shit in the first half. So if they're getting run all over in the first half, then it doesn't matter if it's Ken running the ball well or not. It just means that the defense are playing shit. That the front, the the defensive line, and we've 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 broke this many times. Like I understand where you're coming from and some of your heads at because logically, like was it last season, the defense was on the field so much that they couldn't help but be tired. But this season, there's been a nice balance. I just think that this front four isn't working. I mean, my God, was it this? I think it was this game where we blitzed like ten personnel. Mm. I, I've I've not seen us do that. That that was basically Clint Hurt. That was going, on the Jordan Brooks. Yeah, I think yeah, well, that was JB's yeah. one. Yeah, so I, I looked at it. I looked at it and I went, Clint Hurt's gone right. So you want to play that game, do you? Well, fucking watch this. And he just pulled out of his bag of tricks and went, anyone who can rush, get to the line. And they did, and they just swarmed them, completely overwhelmed them. That, mm. brilliant. But that is not a four-man front. That four-man front isn't working. Mm. We need to have a three-man or five-man front, three defensive linemen, our two outside linebackers, that would work. Anyway, on to the next. Yeah, uh, oh. we're, on, we're on the defence now, and, and we'll get to the Battle of the Trenches now whilst we're on it. Um, for me, before I read the sack sorters out and everything like that, um, You've, you've you've touched on it there, Josh. I, 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 we've just got to find a philosophy with this defense. I get what we're doing now on offense. The philosophy is there with Gino and the thirteen personnel and DK and Lockett and Ken. I, I, I get what we're trying to do on offense now, um, and there's a clear plan moving forward at this point. On defense, start the season three four. Now we're going back to four three. Yet yeah, we're still seeing splashes of three four in there. It's like, like we're not playing an entire game with one scheme we're now playing games with multiple schemes and we're asking our players to now not only be able to play a, th- a, th- a three four but now you've got to play a four three so now you've got to learn two defensive playbooks and it's just too much it, it's for a young defense as well with a lot of young guys and rookies and inexperienced guys and veterans in there but veterans who haven't necessarily proved that they're you know NFL starters like a Cody Barton, like a, you know, I don't know, Michael Jackson on the outside. You're asking these guys to to play two schemes. Like, it, it just pick, just pick, is it 3-4, is it 4-3, commit to it, whether it goes bad or whether it goes good, because I don't know what the plan on defence is anymore. I think that's also why we're getting gashed a little bit, because, it, 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 like you said, I just don't know what, I don't know what the plan is and the philosophy is, but that's just my thoughts on it at this moment in time. Um, I'll read the sack numbers out because, hey, hey, I've actually got sack numbers to read out this week, boys. Um, Isn't that brilliant? John Brooks, his first sack. There we go. Finally, Pez, he blitz through the line, as you always like to see him doing, and he gets his sack. Um, Uchenna Nawosu, two sacks. There he goes. It's all on him on the on the uh, on the edge nowadays. So 
finally he comes through again and gets another two sacks, um, taking his total sack. Uh, numbers to nine on the season so far and Daryl Taylor we finally saw Daryl Taylor get to the quarterback again and uh, and I think we're going to need him going forward because it, like I've just said it can't always be on each and in the war so we need other people um, but for me the battle of the trenches as we're going to get on to now um, as we keep saying it stems from the interior of both the lines uh, the interior of the offensive line was poor the interior of the defensive line was poor yet the perimeters Seem quite Shelby, good. Shelby Harris. Except Shelby Harris. Um, but look, I, I'm just going to get these these PFF pass grades, pass blocking grades for the for the offensive line. Um, Phil Haynes was top with 71.7. Tied second were both the tackles in Charles Cross and Abe Lucas, both on 69.4. Damian Lewis was then in fourth on 68.3. Austin Blythe, fifth with a 66.1. And Gabe Jackson with a 49.8 pass blocking grid. Um, that is just absolutely awful. And then on defence, Uchen Nwosu was the top on 77.1. Dal Taylor was the next best with 76.2. Then Quinton Jefferson, who Grant only had 12 snaps, but 71.1. And then it was obviously Tariq Wallen who will come on to with 69.5. But the, the recurring theme there, <laughs> other than Phil Haynes, is that the the perimeter of both the both the lines in the trenches are playing really well. It, again, these interiors though, it's it's just it's not happening. Um it, it's flashed in the pan from Puna Ford, there's no consistency there. Flash in the pan from Shelby Harris, flash in the pan, good block from from a from a Damian Lewis, but it's just no consistency on the interior and, and we just keep losing the battles. Of, of in in the trenches because of it, and I mean, look, Cam Akers, Cam Akers shouldn't even be rushing for sixty yards and two touchdowns against us. Like it, it's Cam Akers, like Brandon Powell, forty-five yards. It's just it's. Uh, let's be honest, because and I know we've won the game, but the defense was crap for ninety percent of that football game up until the last quarter, where Barton got the interception and Taylor got home and the Wars who started to get home. I'll come to you, Pez. Um, I, I I think we're I think we're um, yeah. I, I just think we you, you could potentially maybe a bit of a red herring and maybe people might forget how bad the defense was in that game. But you go back and watch it, um, the defense was atrocious for that game and twenty three points with John Walford at quarterback and no Cooper Cup and no Alan Robinson Mayfield soon. And it's going to be Baker Mayfield soon, but all these guys out for the Rams and they're still able to put the 23 up. Oh, we're coming to Wimpers, don't you worry? Um, but yeah, I, 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 we just keep losing these battles of the trenches on the interior, and it's it, it's costing us losses and costing us a game there that we we probably should have lost. Let's be honest, and and making it unnecessarily close. So listen to what you said there, James. You kind of. You've kind of solidified in my own personal views on this. Without, like I've said, since we started many of years, I'm not a technical scheming person. I just see, like, I watch what I see and then I come up with the basic ideas, like basic fan knowledge. And I've been thinking for a while that. And it's do you, any since Josh in the Bucks game turned around and said, "Why does it feel like Pete's running this?" I honestly feel so. It's whatever for conspiracy, whatever. But I think we're seeing the defense now because the, the defense is regressed now because I feel like. Pete's got involved for whatever reason. He's whether he or not he sensed that this team actually has a chance to do something, and his little ego, egotistical maniac side has come back out and gone. I need to control this because I need to start being back in control. If we're gonna like make a serious run in the playoffs, it's up to me to do this because he comes across like he could be that type of guy. And since Josh said that in the Bucks game, I started watching and I started noticing previous season things, what we were doing, what were bad. 
going to the bye. The next game comes up. And then I'm scratching my head to see where Clint Hurt is. He's on the field. People saw him walk away. But you're telling me a guy who prides himself on the trenches and on the D-line cannot get the D-line sorted out. But the whole reason the Rams, in my opinion, looking at it, is the whole reason the Rams gashed us to pieces because our deep coverage was so tight, it exposed us up front. Hence why Wolford could run whilst jet sweeps were running, whilst everyone was running around us. Because McVeigh just knows how to do Pete over. He knows. How, and, and this is another thing. McVeigh knows how to beat Pete. And he ran us like a doll all game. What to me even solidifies that we were running a Pete up defense, not a Clint Hurt defense. Josh said it when we smashed 10 through the box. That is what I expect Clint Hurt to do more and more and more because he knows what weapons he's got because he used to coach them for years. Right. So that's it. And then, you, it, and it's like Clint Hurt not being there in the Raiders game. I think something's happened oh, behind the scenes. I honestly believe. Pete's tried taking control and he's tried reverting it to his style because the commentators made a note of it. The commentators were the ones who caught me onto it and then I started watching and they were right. They were saying Seattle's getting gashed so much by the run because their coverage is so tight at the back end that Wolford has nowhere to throw the football. They're, they're all locked down. So all he has oh, the, is The, the secondary, the cornerbacks like Pete coaches are really good and really tight. Thank so, you. do you know, just to follow on from what you... And this is really conspiracy theorists, right? I'm sorry, Jim, we will move off this in a minute. No, I love it. It's the fact, like, the start of the season, when the D turned up, you saw Clint Hurt on the sideline, animated, pumping the guys up, slapping back, slapping bombs, whatever. But as the season's gone on, we said it about the last game, where's Clint Hurt on the sideline? Why? is the camera not panning to Clint Hurt, hugging his guys, cheering them up, you know, being like, that was an amazing play. You, you, you know, you ran that design perfectly. Nothing. I think the guy is a ghost. Like whether, like Pez said, whether he's had some falling out, whether Pete has tried to wrestle back control and Clint's just gone, fine, I'll just Tell do you my what. bit. Clint Hurt would be about the scariest ghost you could ever hope to come across. Oh, can you imagine seeing Clint Jesus, Hurt at the, the end of your bed? So, <laughs> just, just, just to keep it on a serious note, James, uh, to add to what you that say there, Josh, then, I, I don't think I've ever seen an NFL coach, not like football, not like our football, I've never seen an NFL coach see a running back break it to the house to win the game and he's already walking down the tunnel. As if to say body language saying I fucking told him. I told him. So what I'm we're getting no, gashed I'm having at, no part of that. We, we shouldn't we shouldn't be getting gashed the way we're getting gashed if Clint Hurt was actually the coordinator. And we're going to go back to pre-season. Clint Hurt is a yes man. And he has done his job for Pete to a point where Pete's now like, I need control back. Anyone who listens to us, if you're thinking, if you're thinking, what's this guy going on about? He's talking nonsense. Join our Discord. Have a conversation with my brother. He followed the Seahawks in 2005. He plays wise and things like that. He's very much more intricate, detailed than I am. And he will tell you about the, the four-man rush up front is Pete's baby. He's seen it ever since Pete came to the team. And he's never got away from it. That is Pete's front. And you, you see it. Clint Hurt is an aggressive, like you said, fridge of a man. You really think, oh, yeah, just, just rush forward and tickle the line. 
And if you get through guys, be nice to him. No, I'm going to get my best players. I'm going to get Jordan Brooks. I'm going to smash him through a hole. I'm going to take the guy's head off. That's who. That's the kind of character he comes across to me. And I just do not like it. I do not like the trends I'm seeing on defence because it's almost like reverting back to, well, I've done it once before. I can do it again. 12 years down the line and the league's fucking changed. Like, just pack it in, stop it. It is It is interesting, the fact that when we went on our four-game winning streak, that was still predominantly running a 3-4 defence, which if we're going off a 3-4 compared to a 4-3 this season, that was probably Clint Hurt's defence. Now we've seemingly switched back to a 4-3. Pete Carroll's defence taking charge again. Um, yeah. Because, because Pete Carroll... What is his motto? Don't get beat by the deep play. Mm -hmm. Don't get beat deep. And what's happening to us? Don't get me wrong. We're getting gashed all over the fucking park because his methods are stupid and dated. But it's true. It's really true. In this Rams game, we didn't get beat deep. We didn't get we didn't get beat deep, did we? No. They locked them all up. The commentary said it. You watched the game. You noticed it. They locked the back end up. But the issue is. In this modern NFL, the way it is, you can still get gashed to pieces straight down the middle. Because we're not in a season, we're not what the LOB had. That was a pass, predominantly really, it was a pass-heavy era. Look at the fucking stats. That Prescott put up 50-plus on a team and threw for 170 yards. Quarterbacks aren't throwing anymore because of too high coverage. They don't need to anymore because of too high coverage. It's leaving gaping holes, and that's why you're seeing elite running backs going absolute crazy on everyone. And that's what's happening to us. What the fuck did they do? We had a solid unit. We had a solid unit. Mm -hmm. Like, what is their issue? Why do they have to tinker with shit? You've got a solid unit, leave it as it is. No, no, we have to get cute and we have to get fucking pretty. Dicks. There you go. That, that's, this, this, this is the ranty <laughs> pod now. Go on. Yes. You've, you've uncorked that bottle now. Go on, Jim. Um, well, I'll, go I'll bring him. Boy. Well, I'll, before we get Give to him, <laughs> before we get to him, I'll bring in another guy that was one of Pete's guys for many years and then we got rid of him because he was potentially aging and not fitting Pete's defence anymore and is, is this new philosophy of what we were going to be trying to do on defence. And that's obviously Bobby uh, Wagner. Because um, I would like to get your thoughts on his performance from this long-awaited return of B-Wags. Um, just to give some context to his performance, it was a two-step performance um, against us. Seven total tackles, five of them solo, two assists. Um in his career so far with the Rams this season, he has 54 solo tackles, which is tied 36th in the NFL. He has five sacks. So two, obviously two of those came against the Seahawks. So he had three sacks coming into the game on the season, which is tied 50th. Um, obviously no false fumbles and one interception. Um, and yes, obviously that interception was not an interception. NFL referees, get your fucking... Get your rules sorted on a side note because that's bloody two weeks in a row now where we've seen this absolutely cash in hand refs from the being paid off by the NFL to bloody shaft the Seahawks. But that's a debate for another day. And, and change, a changing somebody. narratives, that mate. Yeah, that's changing narratives. Back to Bobby Wagner, who granted it wasn't his fault. They, well, hey, we all know it's not a conspiracy when it comes to the Seahawks, Bez. Um, but yes, Bobby Wagner, um, impressed. It, well, sort of. Who I'll put it this way, who proved who wrong? Because Pete got rid of Bobby because he thought he was too old, didn't fit the new youth system that we want to go with. Bobby's obviously came back and said, I'm not too old, I can still play, I'll go and show you with the Rams. Uh, did anyone win the argument today? I've, I've not wa obviously not watched much Rams, but as far as I'm aware, he, he hasn't done much this year compared to a Seahawks Bobby Wagner. Yeah. Like... I've not heard his name a lot in NFL channels what I follow on social media. He's done a few little things, not the Bobby of old, right? Um, but in his words, oh, it's just another game. Whilst he slaps the Rams logo going, 
I'm him, I'm him. Like, oh, it doesn't mean anything, does it? Doesn't mean you a little, little bit bitter, you didn't wish to be on that sideline. Oh, oh. <laughs> Give it a rest, mate. Give it a rest. But that game alone, and people are like, Oh, I wish we had Bobby, I wish we had Bobby. And yeah, it, it would be nice, but Obviously, you want you want him to retire as a Seahawk, but the money we would have had to pay him with the unknowns of this season, people need yeah. to chill out, rewind to the to the preseason, put the preseason brain back in the head, and go. What was I thinking back then? Oh yeah, I said it was a good idea to cut him because we needed to save as much money as we possibly could because it was a very much unknown. So now we're all sweet and pretty at seven and five in the playoff hunt. Yes, of course, it'd be great to have Bobby at this stage. So if Bobby wants to leave the Rams tomorrow, Mr. Wagner, come back over to the Seahawks. We can put Cody on the bench, play you with Jordan again, with Bruce. Ooh, that would be nice and sweet, wouldn't it? He'd help, He'd help stop the uh, teams rushing all over us, wouldn't he? I, I don't think the leaky, the, the leaky run game would be that leaky much anymore. But other than that, games... It was a it was a statement game for him. It was. Yeah. You knew I it was going to happen. Fact, oh yeah, you knew it was coming. But I love the fact that uh, Tyler in his press conference says something like, um, I, "Whenever I was in the middle of the field, he'd just be behind me." Oh, yeah. yeah, that's right. I'm coming. I'm here. <laughs> it's like I don't have a clue. He said he's just that loud. I don't know if he was actually behind me or not. But all I could hear was him chirping, chirping at me, going, "I'm with you. I've got you." That was hilarious. And to be fair, he didn't because Tyler Lockett, what did he have? About 128 yards receiving yeah. in the game. So 148 might be. Bobby's not going to go full into Tyler, is he? Nearly no. took his head off. Yeah, he did, did nearly yeah. take his head off. But I don't think he'd even want to go full, full boring into him because at the end of the day, he still loves them, them players. He can still see what the the team, what the team could be on the verge of. He wouldn't want yeah. to go intentionally smashing no. players to pieces. I no. think that this this is one of those games where if you've ever played against... Say hi. Oh, I say hi for the camera. You're on YouTube. Say hi. Um, You're on YouTube. So this is one of those. If <laughs> if you've ever played a team sport, if you leave your team and go and play for another team and then you end up playing your old team, it becomes like... It is the equivalent of steroids... You don't need to take anything. I'm not saying Bobby does take them, just to clarify. But it gives you that extra boost, that extra kick, and you will play the best game of the season by far, which Bobby has. Because Bobby is he's gone about his business in LA. He's, you know, he, he's Bobby Wagner, he'll do stuff. But this game was prime Bobby. But you're not going to get prime Bobby every single game. And that's the reason we got rid, as Pez said, the contract. Be the age, like we're trying to get younger, and Pete is trying to build a dynasty where he wants people of a certain age and a certain caliber to be able to keep elevating them season after season. Bobby's already at the top of his game. His the only thing he can do now is either stay there, in my opinion, for this season, and then he'll be on a slow decline. Um, I think Wouldn't he played it? fantastically. He's he's a Seahawks legend, and he will get a standing ovation, you know, from Lumen when he comes back. But I think he'll come back as a, do you know, one, one, one day, day signing thing. Depends how bitter he is, because I listened to his uh, interview with Mike Dugard in the pre off season, and at the time he was that some people in the Seahawks organization who he was not happy with. So I don't know whether he'd want to, but what would be he'll great? Come back, for me sign, is, he'll sign up one day and just retire, yeah. and then he'll try and get his, his jersey retired. He will get his jersey retired. I'd be very surprised. If... Yeah, I'd be disappointed. Have they given it away already? 54. Some... I don't think anyone no. else has got 54. Don't think so. Honestly, I, I don't not. think they will, just because he was the... He, he was... I'd be very surprised if they give 54 away, because he was the general of the whole defence for uh, a yeah. decade. Just you wait don't... till next season when they give away number three to a rookie. I will laugh my tits off. Well, Drew um, takes number sp- three. And there you go. And speaking of <laughs> speaking of rookies, bosh, another segue, well, James. I'll Terry tell you what. Bullet, Terry, bullet, Terry, bullet, Terry, yeah, you do it for me, son. Um, 
<laughs> number 27 is going to be retired at the end of his career. I don't think anyone is going to be wearing that number for the Seattle Seahawks again at this rate because Tariq Woolen, Tariq Woolen, Tariq Woolen. Um, before I make my little reference, which I warned Pez about before the start of the podcast, Josh, I do apologise you weren't here in time to pre-warn you for this. Um, oh, God. Tariq Woolen in week 13. I, I, this is just hilarious. I, 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 I can't believe it. I, I've got no words, so I'm just going to read it. One catch allowed, one interception, Two forced incompletions and an 11 and a half passer rating allowed. I just... I, it's ridiculous, I, isn't it? It's just for 11... I know it's John Walford, but an 11 and a half passer rating allowed. Obviously... It's, it was what? three pass defence. It was three PBUs. Oh, I do apologise. Yeah, three PBUs, three. seven total tackles, six of them solo. Well, there you go. And, and look... Is that sixth interception now breaks the franchise rookie record for the most interceptions by a rookie. The only way I can describe my relationship with Tariq Woolen anymore is, and I don't know if you're familiar with the uh, non-existent the music. Vi- no, it's it's existent. It's existent somewhere. Um, the the music video of Lonely Island's Jizz in My Pants. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Because if, if you don't understand, it's not dick in a box. It's all right. No, it's not dick in a box. <laughs> you know box. what? If we ever want to get him on this podcast, you've got to pack it in. <laughs> you can't pack it in. That's the problem, Pez, physically. Because this lad, if you don't get that context, if you don't get that, you need to go and watch the video ASAP because otherwise I'm going to sound like absolute filthy bastard, I, which I am. Like it anyway. I've, I've, I've now got this scenario where you send him fan mail and he opens up this box and it's just, it's my dick in a box. Good idea. Good idea. Dick I can't in, in time for Christmas. This is, all, this is a big. This is a big fan mail. What's this? It's all James's used boxes. Mate, but that's, come on. But, but, yeah, no, no, I, I promise. This big, is the I thing. I just said boxes there. When he said big, I was like, come on. No, but this because <laughs> in, in the video it gets to the end of the video and it's just like you don't need to go. No, 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 no. I'm explaining it. Sorry, Pez. I'm gonna have to be because. <laughs> It it gets yeah, I've, I've, I've seen it, mate. I've seen yeah, it you've seen times. it. It gets to the end of the video, and the most stupid things, like a gust of wind coming through the window, sets him off, and he jizzes in his pants. Right, that's what it is with Tariq Woolen. Oh, no, like yeah. I just see, like it throws a deep ball, but Tariq picks it off, and I jizz in my pants. Like it, it's just it, oh, everything mate. he does. Right, stop off. seeing jizz in my pants. What? <laughs> <laughs> but that's the way. I, that's, <laughs> That's the only way. It's the perfect way to describe my relationship. Which I just see him on the field. He comes on the on the TV screen, and I just have to grab a pillow and cover me lap with the someone in there. It's just I can't help it with this guy anymore. Like this guy, I, I, it's just he's 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 rocking my world, and I, I can't get enough of it. If this guy isn't first team All Pro, this like oh no, he's 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 definitely All Pro. Like it's oh. We remember we had the was it week four we had the chat when we compared him to Sherm mm. and Sherm's like rookie year and Sherm's second year and it was no I think it was I think it was Sherm's highest interception season was it six or eight I think it was eight, eight. Mm-hmm. and even Sherm on his podcast is just like he, he's all pro if he's not defensive rookie of the year and all pro if if he wasn't going up against a guy with a name like Sauce and went fourth overall, mm-hmm. it would be it would be signed, sealed, delivered, mailed into his box. He'd be it now. But because it's, it's pick, Sauce... Pick do, bias. Do, do, do you know what it is? Just on a quick tangent, but it's about him, is who would have ever thought in two weeks' time that New York Jets was the most pivotal game in the Seahawks season? Geno Smith, Tyler Lockett, and DK Metcalf are going to win Tariq Woolen Defensive Rookie of the Year in that game. DK is going to go out and personally destroy Sauce Gardner. There you go. And then I'll Tariq has to win. Now. There you go. They call I'll it now. Call it now. But look, Sauce, the... Sauce will give him a good fight, but DK I will. will just body him out. Of the yeah, he'll just bully him because, like, well, Sauce is still built like a teenager. But DK don't get is me wrong. Built like just a man. Look, this this game is sensational. Like, mm. just quickly off a tangent in general, just look at the game. Look at the match of Geno Revenge game. You've got DK versus Sauce. You've got Tariq versus Garrett Wilson. That is mm-hmm. going to be sensational to watch. As long as Mike White is still serviceable, Tariq is going to have his hands full because 
because Derek Wilson is not going to be scared to run at him. He's probably going to match him for speed and can burn people on the route. But that just a snippet that excites me to watch. Whether we lose or not, that really excites me because that's defensive rookie of the year game. It is, whoever yeah. comes out of that, like I'm saying, whoever comes out of that game with the better game, better stats, wins defensive rookie of the year. It is the game. It's coming down to it. It looks and like Gino, it is. Gino, the the tripod on offense is going to help Tariq out because they're just going to destroy Sauce. And then Tariq's going to just body Garrett Wilson. But what, what Tariq has over over Sauce, I know, I know he has picks, but the closing speed that Tariq had, I mean, on the pick. I was and just then, about to revert yeah. back to the game. When he baited Walter. Oh, my God. He oh, literally it's amazing. This kid, right? It's happening again. Let, it's let, happening again. Let, <laughs> okay, let, let me let me just let me just go through story time as I love. He came from UTSA as a wide receiver. He, 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 he only him. played about six games as a wide receiver. No, J- Josh, stop. Why are you ruining it? Why are you ruining it? Why are you ruining it? <laughs> it's trying to be realistic. Why are you ruining it? So he started as a wide receiver, played one season at cornerback. Personally admitted, didn't really have a clue what I was doing. I was learning as I was going, found some things natural, some things hard. Comes into the league, no one wants to touch him. No one wants to touch him because they think he might be too much of a prospect. Little did they know, there was a lad from the northeast of England who was banging the drum from him, pre-draft, calling him (laughs) if he gets his opportunity a Hall of Fame cornerback. <laughs> to then, but for debate on this podcast, mocking him, I'll hold my hands up and I, I took the piss out of my like, oh, give it a fucking rest, whatever, James. Like, But then I was like, I appreciate it because if you're talking that highly about him, we'll wait and see. And then to watch, watch him progress for a season as a rookie, only playing one college season as a corner, being raw apparently, to start baiting NFL court. Wolford might be a pile of dog shit. He's still an NFL quarterback, whether he earned it or not. Right? And he baited him. He baited him on a route. Let Who was it? Tutu Atwell? Or was it Skoronic? I think it was that. It was. Might be wrong. I think it was that. Well, with speed, Atwell is a burner, yeah, he's and he baited Walford and just went. It's like he's bored. It's like I've locked this side down so much. Let's see what I can do. Hmm. All right, I'll give him. I'll give him like five yards. Just... And people, the thing is, people are saying, "Oh, he, what he didn't bait him. He was just pouring. He baited him because he didn't take his eyes off Walford. If he bit, if he, if that was yeah. a bad coverage, he'd have looked at Atwell and gone, "Oh shit, I need to close that gap again." But he didn't. He was just. He didn't. He knew he where Atwell was. He yeah. wasn't even have the closing speed to make up yeah. those yards. Oh my just... god! Oh my. It's like he just I'll knows I can like... give like receivers five yards, doesn't he? Because I can, I can, I, I can give them five yards, and I know I'm going to get there if that quarterback thought he knows where the boundary is. At the end of the day. No one can say it was fluky or whatever. No. And they're only saying that because Pete turned around and said, yeah, he's sensational, but he's got things in his game where he's letting receivers get a step on him and this, that and the other. And that's where I think people are getting that dialogue from. Mm. I think it's completely wrong. Me, the truck driver from Preston in England, Pete Carroll, seasoned head coach, going to the Hall of Fame. He's wrong. Because Devontae Adams... Look, look, look at the, the calibre of players he's gone up against. Devontae Adams didn't want to know. DeAndre like Hopkins Devin. tried it once, didn't want to know. Like, them two are classed as top two of the top five receivers in this league mm-hmm. who have vast amounts of experience who can kill defenders in a route, and he just locked them. They didn't want to know. Like, he's locked everyone down all season. He's not had a bad game. I haven't seen a receiver yet that's got the better of him. And, and like you say, he's gone up against Hopkins, Evans, Adams, all these people. None of them rookie have got the versus rookie. Him. I'm telling you, Garrett Wilson, that, another test. Prove me wrong, season. 
Prove me wrong against another rookie who's just as hungry as you. Prove me wrong because we've seen it enough from Garrett Wilson. He can burn people. He can burn, but but there's no one who can move like Tariq at that position. So I, I, I'm not I'm not overly overly worried. Um, if, but can hey. I interject on yes, this course absolute Tariq Woolen love fest? Um, so with Tariq Woolen. And I know James is a massive fan. Listeners may oh, not know. Really? <laughs> um, if you're new to the pod, he's a ma- we're, we're all massive fans here. And uh, if you go to wetalkseahawks.com and click on our store, we have a lovely Tariq Woolen t-shirt named Pick God, a Pick Goat, which is him picking off Brady as well as many, many other designs. Um, that are all done personally by ourselves at We Talk Seahawks. Uh, the whole thing's facilitated by Merry Men Design on Etsy. Um, and if you go to that store, anything you buy would be a massive help from us. This is our first venture into merch. Um, mm. And last week, uh, James, would you like to announce it or do you want me to? Hey, you can do it because I think you've got the roulette thing on your phone. I have. You yeah, so last week, last week we uh, we had a little competition going for our, our regular listeners. Um, just asking you a very simple question. All we had to do was listen to the pod and tell us what bet did Pez suggest you make for last this week's game. Game just gone. Now that bet was for the defense to get a takeaway and take it to the house. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. Uh, he did also say that we get an interception. So it was 50% right. I'll yeah. give him that. It's better, better than I am. Um, but we had quite a few people. <laughs> I mean, back on the screen. But we had a few people that that answered that correctly. They they sent us the message through our socials. Um, we had them on our Discord. We had one through Twitter, Instagram. Uh, they all came through. So without further ado, for those of you on... There you go. On YouTube, I am just going to spin the wheel and let you know who the winner of one of our signature Game Over t-shirts is. Um, we will get in contact with you, and then all you need to do is tell us your size, your preference, and your mailing address, and we'll get it sent straight, straight through to you. And the winner is Dale. There you go. Congratulations, Dale, one of our Discord members, well I think. Yeah. Well done, Dale. There you go. Dale, well done. Um, we will let you know before the pod comes out so you can uh, tell us your details. And there you go. Congratulations, Dale. Um, so, yeah, feel free to check out our store. There's going to be more things added to it. Uh, the guys at Merry Men are hot on helping us distribute. Um, and also a massive shout out to our longest standing sponsor, Blessed CBD. Um, we have had a change in our coupon. So your 10% off is no longer Seahawk. It's We Talk 10. There you nice go. and easy to remember. Nice and easy. Um, Get yourself on blessedcbd.co.uk, select anything you want from there. They're oils, they're gummies, they're capsules, they have balms and lotions, vapes and vape juices as well now. Um, I'm currently on the capsules because I find them a little bit easier than the uh, the oil. Um, I just take them with my morning vitamins because I'm getting old now and I need to take them. Um, at checkout, pop in our, our coupon, which is we talk 10 get 10% off your order. Uh, at the moment as well, if you take if you order anything, um, I believe you are entered into a £200 draw with Blessed CBD. So, again, thanks, Blessed, for being our longest standing um, supporter. And get on there, guys. There's still people that are constantly on repeat orders. We've got more orders coming in, which is really helping the pod. Um, so, thank you very much. Jimbo, back to you. Tell you what, I might have to get on that if I can win 200 quid to help this underpants fund because. That would go <laughs> nicely into restocking my wardrobe back onto the tree wall in there. Um, next, hey. next undies aren't cheap. Hey, next, hey, I didn't say it. I, I don't get it from next, mate. I just next get the... Uh, Primark, mate. <laughs> Primark, there you go. He knows me too well. No, no um, one sees him as far. No, no one sees it. Well, <laughs> yes. Um, right. Let's end with our favourite segments, as we always do, Josh. And we'll try and get it in time this week as we continue this noble quest to get this jingle in time. Um... Are you ready? Count me down. Ready? Three, Three two, two, one. One. Positive, positive Pez. Pez. Positive, positive Pez. Pez. What are one. you positive, positive about, about this week? This week.
That is, that is gold standard. That's that as good on, as you're going to get. It was, I mean, near, it was nearly just a little bit out. It was speed. It's, it's that's like all it was. Fine. It's like reverb. Yeah, it's all, fine. All, the, yeah, all the top parts have that. It's I'll fine. take that. That's northeast take internet it. for you. Sorry. So, we'll have that. Um, this week, we've got the Panthers. I think we were just straight off the bat, score wise, I think we're going to batter them. I think we're going <laughs> to. Like they've got a good defense. Don't get me wrong. It's going to there's going to be some work to be had, but I still think we're going to beat them by two, two, two and a half, three scores, like two touchdowns, field goal. I, th- I think I think we're going to win this comfortably. Like they got an all right D, but I'm not buying the whole Sam Darnold re- reincarnation um, because our D line's going to build from the Rams game. And they're going to get after Darnold and they're going to hit him early. We're talking the Chenna, who's already on a career high of nine sacks, is going to be on drum roll 12 sacks by the end of this game. Three sacks. Mm. Three sacks. Get- <laughs> All right, it's possible. Pos- pos- Do you know what? Sense. And I had a dream about that. I had, oh, a dream yeah, I had a vision that Nwosu had a three sack game. I don't know where, how, when. It was a Super Bowl, but I don't know where or how it went. Um, <laughs> I'm only joking about that. But I did have a dream they had a three sack game, so I'm sticking with it. Three sacks, get your bets on. So you tell people to to, we do not on. advocate betting on this. Uh, <laughs> we're not no, any, do not listen. Betting company just do. has just loves a bit of a flutter. Um, no, yeah. So I think um, the line's going to do well. Um, with that being said, in the chain reaction, Colby Bryant's going to get his first interception. Back on the Colby train. Tariq, Tariq's going to have his sun lounger out because sun might be out. He might be trying to catch a tan in the cold weather. Um, and then on the offense, if Ken sits, get ready for an explosive Travis on the game. And then we're all going to be scratching our heads. Of, why isn't Travis Holmer been sharing the workload with Ken more often? Because he's going to be RB1 with Dallas still banged up. So it's going to be him, Derwin Thompson. Derwin Thompson's going to be uh, Alec Collins' style of running back, just to you know sprinkle a bit of jazz in there. But Travis is going to take one to the house. This is if he starts, if he's healthy and he starts, because apparently it's just an illness that kept him out this week. So mm-hmm. he should be back. And I think he'll he'll take one to the house. He's going to just imagine it. We're into their territory, 40, 30 yards around that area. And he's going to start, cut out to the right, get a seam down the sideline. And, it, and whilst he's doing it, because he's such a bulldozer, he's going to just truck a defender on his way to the end zone. I like it. I, I like the it's it's the envisioning something and and what's it called manifest destiny, isn't it? It's like manifesting yes. what you want. I like it, mate. I like it. Yes. Although I'm I'm, I'm more sceptical because they've got Tuba Hubbard and Devon. Is it Foreman? Freeman? Freeman. They've got yeah. Foreman. It is Foreman. Freeman's injured. Oh, well, I I, I he, read he's Tuba Hubbard at the moment. We don't know if he's back. And Chuba Hubbard is shit, so... Oh, I don't know. I liked him in college, mate. I just don't think he's gone to the right team. Nope. Panthers. Although, if, any, if anyone gets drafted by the Panthers, they've gone to the wrong team, let's face it. Good point. Sorry, good, back, good, back to good your solid, positivity, Pez. Good, solid defensive performance in the trenches. That's what we want to see. That's what's going to we happen. Fuck it. A Wolves who's going to have three sacks. Travis Holmer is going to have himself a day. How many yards? I'm writing these down. Oh, Travis, I'm going to say two touchdowns and 78 yards rushing because he's that explosive. He's just, just going to two two big big doozies, as Americans would say, I think. Travis Homer, two um, touchdowns. It's, yeah, it's and to two touch, Trav. Two touch, I, I, like think, I think. I think because he's going to be that... I can just envision he's going to be that explosive once he's got like the backfield to himself because you've seen little spurts, give him the game. He's going to be that explosive that the pass game's actually not going to be relied on that much. That I think the tight end 
he's going to have a better day than DK and Tyler. Any of the tight ends? You know, um, or good just... old. Anyone in I really want to say Colby, but... It he's always feels like he's on the breakout of a big I'd game. Love but... to see, I just yeah. I want to see him in the red zone. It's, I just want, it's I want going to be Noah. Gino, just it's going to be Noah, though. Noah is starting to turn into the weapon, what we spoke about when he first came, and he's starting to be used as the offensive weapon. Colby is literally turning into the Uncle Will role, really good blockers on the line, then break out and get that short to intermediate yardage, whereas Noah is being used for what Noah should be used at. Mm-hmm. And I think Noah will have himself a day against the Panthers. Hey, I like it. I like it, Pez. As always, everyone, get those jotted down because uh, I can guarantee at least one, one or two of those will come true. Not all of them, but one or two because he's he's on good form. He didn't get the touchdown. at the moment. Yeah, he didn't get the defensive touchdown any time scorer, but he got the interception right and everything like that. So he's he's, he's good for a couple on his own. I've, I've got to dust off the rust from the two weeks I missed. There you <laughs> <Back> are. <there. laughs> Going into the playoffs, you've got to start hitting form now. Doesn't matter yeah, about that. Shout out that crystal like ball. Oh, no. But all, all our listeners, don't you worry about it, guys. This is going to be a revert back to before the Bucks game. This is going to be a comfortable, always on top. We can all have a laugh and a joke win. You'll never learn, Josh. He's just predicted a comfortable Seahawks win. A comfortable Seahawks win. There's something we've that seen we... this year. We've I know seen it this we have. Year. I know we have. I know. Hey, hey, right, it's your segment. Oh, I'm not going to argue with you. End, if, Ken, if Ken does play, it stands as normal, everyone. If you're a regular listener, you will know it's 100 yards and two touchdowns. There you go. The staple. It's like your breakfast. It's like pancakes <laughs> with the syrup and the bacon. <laughs> Americans like staple. That's just what happens. It's, on, it's already on the scoreboard. You get it. You get your phone up. It's like... How's Ken done for 102 touchdowns? Game's not kicked off. All because it's going to happen. Getting to that time of night now, isn't it, Josh? He needs, to, he needs to go and have a lie thing. down now. Honestly. <laughs> Listen, thank you, as always, everyone, for listening. Thank you, everyone, who took part in the giveaway. Thank you to everyone who's, like say, from the start of the podcast, who's listened to us over these past year um, to help get our numbers up like the way they were at the start of the podcast and stuff. We're eternally grateful to everyone who tunes into our little pod. Um, Next day, follow us on Discord, social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. Um, and as we say, hopefully, we'll be looking forward to a comfortable Seahawks win and coming on and chatting about it next week. Um, but yeah, for now, as always, go Hawks. Two to three scores. Go Hawks. Keep sharing. Go Hawks.